record this so that everybody's clear. September, I'm recording these, and I'm sending them to you. Yeah, I'm talking about something else, but thank you. Uh, it is Tuesday the 4th today. Uh, so I record these and send them home so that everyone has everything they need to be successful. Is that clear? So I really, really think that a lot of kids have are used to having excuses, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, you're used to being able to excuse your whatever, your choices, and say, well, give me another chance. I've given you all the chances it's possible to give you, and I'll continue to do that. You have to, at some point, you have to make the choice of whether you want to be successful or not. I can't force you. I can, what they used to say, what is it they used to say? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? So you have to make some choices. If some, something happened with the assignment that you weren't able to get it uploaded or whatever, like some people have said, then see me during advisory. That's what advisory is for. Is that clear? Today's Tuesday. I have meetings after school. I can't meet with you after school. I was here at 7 o'clock, actually 7.05 in the morning. I was sitting at this desk and coming up with stuff and went and printed it and handed it out to, handed it to Ms. Perez. So we had plenty of time. You could have came in this morning and discussed it. If I, if I were you, right, and I had trouble uploading this, I think it's a 300-point assignment, or is it 200-point? I can't remember. 400-point assignment that I had in three days to do if I had trouble doing it, what would I do if I was a concerned student? What would I do first thing in the morning on a Tuesday? Find somebody to help you. No, really? It was due on Tuesday. It didn't get done. It's, it's Tuesday morning. I had a problem fill in the blank, right? Right? What do I do? Somebody. I'm, this is, I'm asking the question, yeah. Go to the teacher. Go to the teacher. Say, Mr. Mendoza, I was sitting in this chair with the door open, the lights on, since 7 o'clock. How many people came to me and told me that they had trouble uploading this document? How many people do you want to guess came to me? Guess, make a guess. Zero. Zero. Oh, I did. I came to say we were going to the class. You didn't say you had trouble uploading. Did you say you had... You turned the paper in. You didn't say it was, I had trouble uploading it. Nobody said, zero people came to me and said, I had trouble uploading it. Zero. When I'm putting the zeros in the grade book this morning, after I conference with you and say what issues happened and you gave me nothing, right? I put zeros in. Then all of a sudden, people are telling me they had trouble. I've gotten uh, some requests. What can my daughter do? What can my son do to get his grade up, their grade up? What, am I, what do you think I want to, I'm going to say to your parents? That I, I'm saying to you, what do you think I'm going to say? Do the work. Do the work and upload it on time. And if you don't do it on time, do it late, but do it. You have trouble? Be proactive. Go to the teacher. I had one student email me over the weekend. I had trouble with my Juno doc. I was confused because I didn't understand what the Juno doc had to do with this assignment, but, and it didn't, right? But he, he was proactive. See me. We have a communication method, Jupiter grades. You, I'm here early in the morning. I'm here in the evening. I'm here during advisory. You have a, a method of getting a pass to come here during advisory. Why are these things not happening? It's been a month, right? This is not the first day. I had, a, I had someone just this morning, I think it was this morning, maybe last night, I had trouble, I didn't know how to upload something to Jupiter. How is that possible? We've had seven assignments, two days worth of how-tos, right? Videos sent to you on how to do it. Extra credit given to students to help you learn how to do it if you had trouble. What were you doing when all that happened? Right? So if you're having trouble, I'll say this again. I've said it I don't know how many times. If you're having trouble uploading the stuff, see me. 
Is that clear? You need to see me during advisory. Get a pass before you leave here. Line up. I'll write you the passes and hand them out. And you come here during advisory. Now, what about the students that say, well, I don't understand what's going on. I can, uh, what help can I get? Well, I'm confused what you don't understand. We have time right here in class. What don't you understand? Let's walk through it. Silence. Silence. I, I, I send you the, the notes in class. You can listen to see how many questions I get asked and how many questions I answer. I'll tell you how many, what percentage of questions I answer. 100% of the questions. Why are you sitting there quietly and not asking a question? Well, I'm shy. Write it down. Email it to me. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. Come to me during advisory. See me in the morning. Your excuses are disappearing quickly, ladies and gentlemen. They're excuses. Start to step up. Because we're getting into biology. We started on Friday. Is that clear? And it's going to get really... You know, all the how-tos and introduction of how high school works, is, are they done? Starting, starting on Friday, really moving into today, uh, you need to step up your game. You need to get ahead of the game and to be on it every day. Every day you need to be doing your assignment, whatever that assignment is. No excuses. If you can't do it for whatever reason, you need to be proactive and come and see me. Getting a note from a parent that it is, a great, is a great idea. Coming in the morning, another great idea. Coming in the evenings on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Coming during advisory. Every day. Except Friday meetings. Great idea. Get ahead of the game. Because I cannot, cannot follow along with 120 kids and make sure they come and check on you individually every day. There's not enough time in the day. I cannot do that. And you're, honestly, your parents are busy too. You're in high school. You're not in middle school anymore. You need to get, start doing your work on your own, and you can do it. It is not, don't tell me you can't do it. It's hard. Yes, welcome to the real world. It is hard. I make no excuses for that. It is what it is. Some of you find it easy. Some of you find it hard. Those of you that find it hard, guess what you have to do? Guess. Harder. Work harder or smarter. Get help. But who's going to have to, where are you going to get the help? Hello. Hi. My name is Helper. How do you do? I'm here for you. Someone close that door. So, moving on. September uh, 6th, as I said earlier, oh, this thing's, my pencil's dead. All right, let's try this again. September 6th and 20th are our two days that we're going to do anatomy camp. That's this Thursday. And then the, another, I think it's another Thursday on the 20th. Somebody can check it. I would be putting that in my calendar. I would certainly, it is another, uh, not mm -hmm. the following Thursday, but two Thursdays after that. This is the kind of stuff I'm going to be writing down, not interrupting class, asking when is anatomy camp. All right? Because that's what I'm going to get, and I would really rather not get it. Let's, I, I'm spending class time explaining it, so you write it down. I love to see kids getting their phones out and putting in their calendars. They're getting their handwritten calendars and putting in excellent. Their planners, the ones the school gave them, or their, their, their personalized ones, whatever. Whatever works for you, let's get it written down. That's right. If you don't write it down, you lose 90% of what you learn. This is stuff you need to know. Sixth and the 20th, two anatomy camps. You will be working with human organs. We need mature students. And 
I'm going to tell you right now, I would rather take the same student twice than take a student that's going to be immature. Does that make sense? I don't want... There are, number one, no pictures of the, of the organs. It is not, not ethical to take pictures of the organs. I will take pictures of you. I will not include the organs. You may not use your phones to take pictures during this experience. People have donated their bodies. These are parents, somebody's child, somebody's parent who has died and given their bodies so that people in medical school can learn about anatomy. And you're going over there to touch and see and feel and experience a real human body organ and talk to medical students about two different topics. And we'll, I'll tell you what they are right in a moment. So now you have to make a choice. Are you mature enough to do this? 60 of you will be invited. The other half the class will stay back. So 60 of you will go, 60 of you will stay behind. Those that stay behind will have work to do. We are leaving at 12, at 12 p.m., on both days, we're going to walk over to the medical school. The event starts at 12.30 and runs until 3 p.m. You will be dismissed at 3 p.m. from Case Western Reserve. If you want to come back to the school, the teachers will be walking back. You can walk back with them. If you would rather from there go to your, your rapid, or go to the health line, you're welcome to leave, or have be picked up, you're welcome to, be, to do that. Which, whatever you're more comfortable with. 12.30 to 3 p.m. I hope everyone knows that the medical school is literally two streets away. Maybe three. Two, three streets away. I think you can handle being dismissed from there. But we'll walk you back if you need it, right? Okay. 12 p.m., 12.30 to 3 p.m., dismissed at 3 p.m. On the 6th, the, the topic will be exercise. And nutrition. You're, you're going to have to decide if that's what you want versus the 20th. It's going to be cancer. So most of you are only going to be able to go to one event. Most of you will stay behind on one day or the other. Some of you will have the opportunity to go both times. Why is that? Who can, who can make a guess on why is that? Yeah. Well, you're, you being mature is, is correct. You'd have to, you, that's a minimum requirement. But why, how is it that if, we, if there's 120 kids and we got 60 spots and we're going twice, how can anybody go twice? Um, maybe if you have like work done and just submit it. Yeah, but how are we getting the spots? Where are they coming from? You had in the back? <laughs> I can't see you and I don't want to say names. We're recording. Go ahead. God, I want to say your name because you're so brilliant. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's, it's, it's something a lot of kids miss. And she got it right away. Some people are going to knock up. Why? You're not mature enough. Who's going to make that decision? Not me by myself. The ninth grade team will get together and we're going to discuss. How are we making that decision? Do we know you? Do we know who you are? Have we hung out with you? Have I been your, to your quinceanera? Have I been, you probably haven't even had it yet, have you? No. Not yet, because you're only probably 14, right? Uh, but could someone turn the light on? We don't, I don't know you. I don't know your parents very well. I might have met them. I like, I think I know one of your aunts, cousins, really well. So I know something more about some of you than others. 
So that how how am I, how are we making this decision? Yes. Um, based on how we act in school. Thank you. We've not we've had you in class for a month. If you can't handle returning the, the hall pass to the to the hook every time you go to the restroom, maybe we you can't handle holding it along in your hand without making a joke. Maybe that's not something we want to. If you can't handle getting, could you ask him to? Sit up, please. Thank you. If you can't handle getting your work done and uploading it over a weekend, maybe you're not going to be able to handle taking notes while we go and, and, and sit for, what is it, from 12.30 to 3 p.m. after lunch without either losing your mind or, or going to sleep. If you can't handle sitting in at 8 o'clock for half an hour talking about you how are you going to handle from 12.30 to 3 p.m. talking about an, a human organ or whatever is going on across the street? I, you know, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And, that, and again, it's not going to be me. We're all going to get together and we say, you know, Jimmy's been kind of not focused in class. They're, Jimmy makes a lot of jokes. Jimmy goes to sleep. Jimmy's not in dress code. Jimmy does this. Jimmy does that. I've told, him, I've told him over and over again. And if the other teachers are like, hey, Jimmy is it fine with me. I don't know what's going on. Huh, all right, we'll let him go. But I'll be honest, if you're doing that in one class, you're probably not going to go. Because if you're doing all those things, I'm saying any one of those things you're doing in one class and the others you're still... We're going to have to ask at some point, why can't you do it in so-and-so's class? Because you're responsible no matter where you are. Yes, ma'am. Um, so if you get chosen to go, will we have to have permission slips? To have our yeah, you don't have to have permission slips because it's anatomy camp is within three miles of the building. You have a permanent permission slip signed by your parents and you at the beginning when you enter the school. That and a photo release has also been uh, signed. Unless your parents haven't, and if you're not comfortable and your parents haven't signed it, please let me know. I will get, I will talk to the office and ask them. I'm afraid you may not be able to go to things like Case Western Reserve Anatomy Camp if you choose not to have your photo taken because Case Western Reserve takes pictures. Do you see what I'm saying? And they use them for publication. Uh, so does University Hospitals, Cleveland Clinic. You, we've had kids' photos on the website, the CMSD website. You've seen them. Uh, if you look at our website at all, you'll see that they've taken, Cleveland State has taken some kids, some of our kids' pictures and put them up on a giant billboard for advertising purposes for various programs. If you don't want that to happen, then maybe you can't go to the program because that's how we get funding for a lot of Right, a lot of the funding comes from these people that want to say, "Hey, let's look at what we're doing. We're we're helping these high school kids go to medical school early. Go do this. We're giving these kids five hundred thousand dollars." Well, they want to be able to show your picture. Does that make sense? All right. So it's not a, it's not a punishment. It's just like I, it's in in some programs you have to be able to have your picture taken and published. All right, so we're all good with this idea of what's happening. Uh, we, I have to meet with the ninth grade team, but we may be going to the zoo on the 24th, and that's going to be up to the ninth grade team. I know I am going on the 24th to the zoo with my, uh, with my AP environmental science class, all right? But we may all be going to the zoo on the 24th. Um, Right to be announced whether we're going to go or not, and then on the fourteenth, I should say in between on the fourteenth, I am definitely going to take a group to what's called Envirathon, and that's going to be at Stearns Farms, and you know, you know, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to take at least thirty kids. I'm going to see if I can take a few of you. I want to take like two kids from each each of the classes. So if I can take up to forty, I, I I'm 
technically supposed to take 30. I'm assuming some of the uh, seniors aren't going to want to go, uh, and I'm assuming that they might be able to squeeze a couple of you in there. So I think it'll be fun, and it's a very good learning experience. So uh, on the 5th, I will be absent. So the day before we go on the anatomy camp field trip, I will be absent. I will be getting your books, trained on your books, your new e-books. Uh, I'm going to try to get that done tonight. All right. So you're, you have books coming. You have e-books. Uh, this Thursday, we're going on a field trip. On Wednesday, you'll have another one of these packets to do. I would suggest that when I'm absent, you take it seriously. You get it done and you upload it. All right, you have to do all three, follow through. I was a golf coach for a while. You can swing and stop midway, and guess what happens to the ball? It doesn't go anywhere. All right, so you have to follow through. All right. So this is the stuff that I had up there. I'm sorry that I, I did not realize it wasn't up there, but this is the stuff that you should have written down, right? Okay. Oh my goodness, I, that didn't show up all that time? I didn't, it didn't show up? All that time and nothing, it didn't show, huh? Let me, let me rewind this. So let's go ahead and start talking about and taking notes on what we went through, what you should have gone through uh, on Friday. Um, I start talking about it and actually learning a little bit of, uh, of it. First thing I want to talk about, and it's just something that's, it's one of those, there's like these really big ideas in biology. And it, it depends on who you're talking to is what is a big idea. Because you might think there's a, your idea is a big one, but when you really talk to other people, people are like, it's not, that's not really that big an idea. So there are some big ideas in biology. And, and if you focus on those big ideas, you can be very successful. So uh, what are some of those big ideas? Well, one of the big ideas in biology is this idea of systems. And if you looked at your syllabus at all, you know that systems are things that we were supposed to talk about a, a week ago. And we're kind of a week behind. Not all your fault, but... And this idea of systems, the way it works, is that a lot of people, they think, well, if I have a block, right, and I push that block, this is me, I push the block, the block is going to do what? It's going to move. And that's a simple, that's how people think, right? Uh, there's a dead person on the ground. There's a, someone standing over them. There was a sh there's a gun in their hand. The person was shot. This guy shot. And it's easy. What else is there? A lot of times it is, right? And most, a lot of times you push the block, the block moves, end of story. A lot of times there's a dead person. They were shot. There's a guy standing over them with a the gun. Guess what? A guy did it. But the, in, in reality, in, in, the, in this world, most things don't work this way. Most things don't work this way. So because we're going to go to anatomy camp, let's start with an anatomy example. You would like to think of the heart, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of draw a heart here, a really horrible heart. I can't. I can't. It's something that looks like it. Looks something like this. Yes, it's horrible. Deal with it. And Yeah, yeah, we're not talking about Valentine's Day hearts, unfortunately, or fortunately, because I'm kind of sick of Valentine's Day. Anyways. 
people are like, don't you love your wife? I say, yeah, I love her every day, not just on Valentine's. Not just on Valentine's. All right, so... This is horribly drawn, but that'll work. There's a heart. And this heart's sitting there. And we can talk about a heart as an organ. But does this heart work on its own? It needs blood. That's right. That's right. That's good. It does need blood. It needs you know, this, this stuff here, right? It needs the blood that's going to go in every direction. Hopefully these walls go all the way down, right? And actually, I, like I said, this is horribly drawn. I'm trying to rush through this. I can do better. This is all oxygenated blood in here. So red means what? What does red mean? That the blood has what? Oxygen. If, it, if you have red blood, it's, it's, it's full of oxygen. Now, a lot of people think that, that blood without oxygen is blue, and, that, and that's not true. Uh, it turn, it, has anybody ever given blood or been someone when they've given blood, been with someone when they've, when they've given blood? They do that here. That's right, they did do it here. Well, it turns out that blood that's blood that's not is not blue, blood that doesn't have oxygen is not blue. It's actually a purple, and I don't have that color right off uh, off off hand. Uh, but it's kind of a purple black. It's really dark. If you ever if you, it's not really a black, it's a real dark purple. So a really deoxygenated blood is like a, and the reason it's kind of purple is that the one of the things that gives it red color, it's red, is the iron. And when iron doesn't have oxygen, it kind of looks a little bit of like a. So the dark ones, the blood with no oxygen. That's right. The dark ones, the blood with no oxygen. It's a great question. The veins look blue to you when you're looking through the skin because you're looking at the light bouncing going into your skin through your skin being absorbed by the, all the pigments, and then whatever's left is what's bouncing back to your eye, right? So you're not actually looking at the color of the blood. You're looking at the color of the blood through the skin. So it changes the color. So it's not blue, but it does look blue if you look at it, and that's why you, you've been taught venous blood is blue and what have you. That's fine. Well, of course, this heart is connected to what? To everything in your in your body, this is the blood that's going back from the, your body. It's called the vena cava. It's a giant vein. It's the biggest vein. It gets all the all the venous blood from all over. It's sort of like a major highway. All the roads lead to this highway, right? So all the veins in your body all come in, feed into this vena cava. The superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava. What do you think is superior and, and inferior mean? That's a, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. It could be. The top. The, the, the stuff from the top is superior. The stuff from the bottom is inferior. Because it's coming from all over your body, from your head as well as your feet, right? And forgive me about the colors, but I don't really have a, a purple offhand, so that's, that's kind of a... This is a sketch, right? And all that blood goes into this heart, into this place right here. Was this called the what? And a lot of people would like to say left. It turns out that when we label things right or left in anatomy, we look at the right or left of the cadaver or the organism, the thing that you're looking at. Is that clear? It's their left or their right. So that's why this is the right, because even though for us it's left, is that correct? 
You look up there and you're like, oh, duh, that's the left. Well, if you think about it, the person who you're cutting up, that's their what? Right. That's their right. Or the rabbit, or the squirrel, or the turtle, or whatever it is you're cutting up. Yeah. Isn't it possible to be born with your heart on the right side of the body rather than the left, so are your organs are switched? It is. It is. It's a rare condition. Um, I'd assume most people that, that are born that way die. Uh, but there are people that survive. And there, they, there are, I read at least one paper where the doctors were really surprised. Like, whoa, you know, I have a heartbeat. What's up with that? <laughs> You're a zombie. No. Uh, yeah, the heart's on the wrong side. Yeah. It happens, it's really rare, right? So. So anyway, as the blood comes into the right atrium, the heart contracts, the heart's a pump, right? And the whole point of a pump is to move fluid. So it moves the blood, it squeezes. This is the muscle, squeezes. This valve only opens one way. So as it squeezes this part, this little chamber, we call them chambers. This is called a what? A right what? Right, right but it's called a, an atrium. Do you know what an atrium is? What is an atrium? Yeah, but what is an atrium? Do we have an atrium here in this school? What, where is that atrium? That, that, that's right, it is in the hallway. But where is the atrium? When you any, to anybody know? Yeah, before I answer, I want to make sure no one in the room knows where an atrium is. When you say the atrium to the building is... That's right. It's this, it's it's okay. So let's think about it. The atrium is that place by the stairs near it by early college on the first floor when you come up the stairs. When you come in, they have the metal detectors. That's an atrium. So what it, is that? A and D. Okay, whatever. A and D. Yeah, yeah. The stairs. Yeah, the early college and, and a, let's not get into detail. Bigger about details. Let's just focus it as you enter. In the morning, right? You have those metal detectors. That's the atrium. That's space. It's a chamber, right? It's a space, right? Where is that space? House. Yeah, it's in John Hay. Right? Is it on the third floor? Is there an atrium up here? Is there an atrium at the back door by the custodian? Why isn't the custodian's office considered an atrium? That's a chamber. That's a room. Why isn't the gym an atrium? Why is the atrium only the thing that has the stairs and the metal detectors? Um, because everything travels through it. Close. Everything, uh, the word travel, everything, yeah? Well, it seems like it's all on the main level. Okay, closer, main level, yes, it's where everything not tra enters. See, I didn't have to say it. I didn't have to say it, did I? You said it. I don't like saying it because I can speak all day. You don't listen. You don't think. You have to tell me. If I say it, you don't think it. If you say it, you thought it. I know you thought it. I know she thought enter because she said it. I say enter. How do I know you think it? I don't even know if you're listening to me. So all the blood enters at the atrium. All the blood that's coming back from the heart. When blood is going to the heart, we call it a, a vein. A vein is, what, is, a, is a blood vessel that carries blood to the heart. It's just that simple. The atrium is the chamber housed in the heart. I love how she said that, housed at John A. That was well said. It's a, it's a, it's a chamber housed in the heart that where blood enters the heart, right? It's called an atrium. Then when that blood gets squeezed, this, these, again, and you have to think about it, these blood, these chambers, these have valves, and these valves have little, there's all kinds of little structures that hold, hold the, the valves together. Valves are just one-way doors, in this case, right? That's what valves are. They're ways of allowing things to flow in a, usually in, un, in one direction. If things flow in both directions, it's a window, right? If it's a valve, you only get one direction. You need to, you need to get up, you need to get up 
and, and pay attention or you need to go to the office. It's okay. I'm not judging you, but you have to make that decision. Yeah. This thing I'm drawing out is a valve. If you're talking about this whole structure here is an atrium. This is the vena cava. Vena is V. No, oh, let me just go ahead and spell it. Oops. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's this way. I mean, it might not be. I can't remember how to spell it, to be honest. I think it's. Somebody can look it up. Vena cava should be spelled something like that. I don't know. Well, we're going to move on, though. I don't really want to spend time. I really, this is not the point. I'm not trying to teach you anatomy. I'm, I'm trying to get you to the idea of what is a system. Right? And then that's the whole point. I'm still, I'm still working on, on the big idea example. That's an, it's a, I'm only using anatomy as an example because we're going to anatomy camp. So, but you have to understand what a system is. So let's focus. Let's keep focused. I, I, I mean, we could. I mean, we could. De could do someone look it up? How to spell it? Yeah, you spell it how right. is it? All right. So the, it's not about how it's spelled or what's it called. It's about how this thing works, right? So, anyways, the right atrium flows into the what? The blood is a one-way valve. Only goes one way. These valves only go one way. And so the blood flows there and then goes where? It goes into the right, the, from the right atrium goes where? The right ventricle. I love that. Keep that idea in your mind because it's still developing. But yes, you're in the right, you're heading in the right direction. I like the way you think that you ask a question like, okay, so the point of a system is, is that what you're saying? That's exactly the kind of question you want to ask your professors when you're in college. Okay, so you're exa what you're saying is, is this what you're saying? And your thinking is when it's on the test and I'm looking at, the de at, at a system and I'm asked to define it or I'm asked to identify its parts, I'm going to be able to do that because I've asked in class already what a system is. All right, so right ventricle. So blood goes in the right ventricle, and then it has to go somewhere. And again, it's a bad drawing, but there it is. There's a, there's a, there's a valve here, another valve that allows the blood to flow. In which direction? Now, still, there's no oxygen. Did anybody see any oxygen come in here? No, no the, you, you did not. Again, badly drawn, but we're going to go. It's going to go into this thing. This is blood going away from the heart. So it's not a vein. What is it? It's an artery. It's a big vein. It's a big blood vessel, so it's an artery. It's going away from the heart. That's why it's an artery. There's no oxygen in it, but it's going to someplace. And so because it's good so much, bless you, it's going to where it does not have any oxygen. It's all out of oxygen. Where it needs to go to the lungs. I saw the hand up. That's good. Thank you for that. But it's, I'm okay with see. I can't really see well. Remember, I got a light in my face. It looks like I'm. I can see well, but I really can't see where everybody is. So, try to remember that as you decide to raise your hand. So the art, the blood goes to the uh, in the artery because it's going to the, to the lungs. We don't call it the lung artery. We call it the. Pulmonary artery. Pulmonary means pulmonary means lung. All right. So pulmonary artery. Please keep checking my spelling, making sure that I, that everything's done correctly. That's great. So the blood's going from uh, from the from the right ventricle. It's going to the lungs. How many lungs do you have? Two. How many? How much? How many blood vessels? Now again, this is horribly drawn, right? So I'm just kind of laying it out loud. So it's, it does not flow this way. It doesn't look this way. But I, I'm not, I don't have time to draw it in layers and what have you. So there you have this, this big pulmonary artery. It's a big thing. 
there's just all this, all the deoxygenated blood in the whole body is, is flowing through it because it just came through the right ventricle, right, uh, right atrium, right ventricle, left into the pulmonary artery. Now it's going to need to go to the lungs. There's two lungs. What does this thing have to do? It has to split. Structure and function. Did you see that? That's another big idea. Oh my goodness, I love it. I might get chills when I, when I think about it. Structure and function. Another big idea in biology. Everything structure is related to its function. If this artery is going to function to take all the blood in the body to the lungs, with an S, then it has to split. Uh, if it doesn't split, then it, it doesn't work. So that, so structure and function has to split. Splits into two. Yeah, you can draw it any way you want. It's it, it's not really well drawn, as I said. That's not the point. You can look in anatomy books. I have on this app. I can pull up in a minute. I can pull up for you uh, some professionally drawn. Uh, pictures of this whole system, but I don't want to really look at that. I want to look at some ideas, these ideas of systems and what? Structure and function, right? So I'm not really concerned about it being perfectly drawn. So at then at this point, you have these things that kind of look like this, a little, hopefully not floppy and they do not have these perfect shapes so they don't they, the heart does not look like this the lung does not you know these are sketches and there's two of them hold on I know it's 57 we're not going to go anywhere obviously not to scale these go I, if you're putting things away you're wrong and when I lecture you on that again don't roll your eyes so these, this pulmonary artery takes all the blood to the heart. Then what has to happen? What has to happen? The oxygen, it picks up the oxygen. It's from the lungs. That goes, the oxygen goes to the blood. Okay. The, the blood is now oxygenated. What has to happen? Has to go back. If it doesn't go back, then, they, then you're bleeding to death. And so now the, this blood is going to where? To the heart, so what do we call that? What is this? This was a artery. This is now going to the heart. What is it called if it's going to the heart? The vein. This is the pulmonary vein. So the pulmonary veins meet. They come back into the where? Where are they going to go into the heart? The right atrium. See how you see if you understand something, you can apply it. And so all the blood again. This is horrible, but the, as far as the drawing goes, but all the all the oxygenated blood goes in the right atrium, and then it goes into the right ventricle, and then from the right ventricle to the rest of the heart, the body again. And it's a closed system. System. See, there's many different organs involved here, many different tissues. But it's all one system, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow. All right. Yeah. We can have hemorrhaging in the lungs. If you need a pass to come here during advisory to deal with whatever, you need to come and get a pass now or forever hold your peace. Remember, we're talking about left is what when you're in anatomy? In perspective of the thing you're cutting up. Yeah, but since it's going back into the other side, wouldn't it be the left That's true, though. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. I don't even know why I wrote right atrium. It's left atrium and left ventricle. You're absolutely right. I got distracted with everybody leaving. What's up?
What is this? You okay with that? Wow. You're, I, you are asking, okay. Good luck. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I'm just letting you know, you are dro getting dropped in a, in a pot of boiling water. Boiling uh, water. For this class, go ahead and take a seat. You have a, you better come after school. All right, advisories. Which, whose advisors are y'all in? Hey, Who's in Custer's? Anybody hey, else in Custer's? You. You're in here. That's all I can say. Sit down. I, I don't, I don't want to. I can't talk about it now. You have a class. What? You're in Custer. Anybody else in Custer's advisory? Put both your names on this. Go. Next. Anybody else in Bannock Court's advisory? Put your names on this. Go. Anything else? Next. Put all three of your names on this in pen. Next. 